Okay, we just arrived in uh, Dumaguete, coming from Tagbalaran City, and so the uh, port here is quite uh, infamous, I'll show you. So uh, getting off the boat here is notoriously uh, quite treacherous at times, because the, uh, oh, the boat deck here is just open to the sea, uh, it's not really guarded by anything, so it's just open sea behind the boat there. Today happens to be a pretty calm day. We had a nice ride over, so we didn't have any such problems. Well, no thanks. Well, this is uh, pretty pretty brutal getting attacked over here as you uh, get off of the uh, ferry boat. <laughs> yeah, I opened my bag up. There was three Bajou kids like peering into my bag. <laughs> They hold my thing. <laughs> they wanted that thing? Yeah. Well, you could have sold it to them. All right, so here we are. We're going to find out. We're going to try and figure out what the big deal about Dumaguete is here. So uh, this is the uh, famous, what do they call this, the boardwalk? Well, I'll call it a boardwalk anyhow. I don't know, we've refused all of the trikes and taxis so far, but I'm not sure how far we're going to walk because we're going over to the Robinson's Mall, the hotel is next to there. Yeah, but the and it's not walking distance, is it? No, it's not walking distance. Okay, so we're walking. Now, now I'm starving. It's about, uh, what time is it, honey? Huh? What time is it? Uh, one o'clock? 12.55. All right, so it's almost one o'clock. I have not eaten anything. She had some crackers on the ferry boat, so she says she's not hungry. But if I can find a Burger King here, I will not pass it up. Okay, so my tour guide tells me that the plan is we're going up to the Dumaguete sign straight ahead. Take some pictures of that. And then we're going to get a trike or a taxi and go to our hotel. Although we can't, we can't get in there until 2 o'clock o'clock check-in we got you know, one one hour to kill the waves were coming over the 2029 I was okay well it's 2019 well it's 2024 and you're back and the waves are not coming over the side here so that's good Okay, so we made it to the Duma Gatimi Dumaguete, Philippines. Isn't there like a I love Dumaguete sign somewhere? What is this? That's this? Yeah. Uh, okay, I guess. Maybe. I guess I'm crazy. I don't know what is there. Well, maybe it's down over here somewhere. I don't know. Do you want to walk down the rest of the way? Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, now, this place I've heard of, why not, as an expat hangout? Maybe I can talk somebody into going over there to get something to eat. We come back here at five or six. Yeah. Okay. Tour guide says this is all lit up and beautiful here at five or six. Yeah, I can kind of, kind of envision that. Okay. Well, we're gonna walk a little bit farther and then hopefully go back to why not and get something to eat for lunch. Okay, she's very hesitant for some reason. We're at the, we're at the entrance to the why not and she's she's choking i don't know why <laughs> all right
fucking day. <laughs> Top floor. <laughs> Penthouse. Okay, so we're going to be in Jumaguete for two nights here. And the reason that we, uh, the reason that we're here is because uh, this young lady here, Joey, uh, she uh, lost her passport uh, two years ago. And uh, in order to get a replacement passport, uh, the procedure is go to your local police station, fill out a police report, an affidavit that you lost your passport. Then you go to, I don't know, someplace in the shopping. What was that place in the shopping mall where you got the, the agent for appointment? Agent. So you go to it. You go to it. Appointment. Yeah, appointment. So you go to a, an appointment agent in a shopping mall. They write you a five-page report of some sort, which we have in hand, uh, and then you go to uh, uh, Office of Foreign Affairs. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Okay. So, being that we uh, live in Bahal, paying well, there's no office over there, and I don't know. Uh, I I can't understand. There's nothing over in Cebu City, but you have to come to Dumaguete. I guess that's the nearest office, so that was a uh, two-hour ferry ride over here. It's the same exact distance from Tagbalaran City to go to uh, Cebu City or to Dumaguete City. So here we are. All right, we're pinned down at an intersection here where there's no uh, stop sign or anything, uh, which is uh, quite typical. There we go. The person at the front of the line has no aggressive nature, then uh, you just have to sit behind them, unfortunately. Okay, here's our lovely hotel. Okay, show us a video of her walking up the stairs. This will be viral. There she goes. Okay. No, I missed you going up the stairs, honey. Sorry. No. Maybe maybe going down. Okay, so this lovely hotel here, the Go Hotel in Dumaguete, near the Robinsons Mall. Uh, this uh, this was uh, one thousand four hundred for the night. So we're gonna we're gonna check out the Wi-Fi. Okay. So here it is. I gotta tell you. It's, uh, it's not bad. Uh, hotels are uh, very reasonable over here in Dumaguete, it seems to me. Uh, you have enough space to get up around your, your bed, and actually if somebody's standing on the other side of the bed, you can actually squeeze by them here, like this, okay? <laughs> Without having to knock them over onto the bed. Okay, so I just signed on to the Wi-Fi here, and it looks great. It's got uh, full strength showing on the uh, the little Wi-Fi symbol on the phone. And I uh, pulled up the YouTube homepage, and it popped right up, so we're looking good. Okay, so we're leaving the Go Hotel, heading over to the Robinson's Mall where Jovi has her appointment at 8.30? 8, 8, 8, 8 o'clock, so she made sure that we stayed at a hotel that was walking distance from the office inside of the shopping mall here so that I could remain in bed. There it is, the Go Hotel. Okay, so we made it to the Department of Foreign Affairs here where Jovi is going to get her new passport. Uh, the dry run is now completed. It took about seven minutes to walk over here. Yes, seven minutes. Seven minute walk from the Go Hotel. So that's where she'll be going tomorrow morning, bright and early. She's really in her element now. So many bags, so little pesos. But here she is. She's got a whole wall of bags at home but it's never quite enough.
must have a bag for every single occasion. Okay, we made the big time. We're in the foyer of the Robinsons Mall here in Dumaguete. Bumming around looking at shoes and bags as usual. I do not need bags and I have plenty of shoes. So I'm just uh, following somebody here. Over to the shoe store. Okay, I just got my 20 peso ice cream cone here on the Jumaguete Boulevard. And here's the famous food stalls that they apparently set up in the late afternoon here. It's about three o'clock. Didn't notice them before. We're gonna go down to the end here. Okay, now up ahead here we have the very prestigious Dumaguete Press Club. Okay, so uh, this looked like the end of the uh, boardwalk here, but it, it just keeps going. We're gonna go around that corner over there and see what else is down there. Okay, if you're hungry in Dumaguete, I recommend that you come down to the end here and uh, get a little something to eat down here. It's very appetizing. Now that is one tired old house. Okay, so we're inside of the Ground Zero Bar. And so we're going to interview a young lady that we found out on the boulevard there. Uh, what's your name, young lady? I don't know my name. She doesn't know her name. Well, that's, that's good. It's just my type then. All right. Okay, so it's day two here in Jumaguete. And we jumped into a trike to take a short ride down to Oak Museum. And we ended up uh, instead getting talked into somehow going up to the town of Valencia here. Except for one little problem, which I'll show you. Now, my tour guide tells me she doesn't think it's raining up there. Uh, so we're going to see whether that's true or not, but it sure looks like rain ahead to me. Okay, so we've gone about 10 or 15 minutes further here, and uh, as you can see, it's uh, started raining. So uh, I should have made a bet on that one, but uh, I will say it, it cooled off coming up this way. I'm not sure if it's simply because it's raining or if we went up the side of the mountain. I think what's happened here is that the uh, the gutter here is clogged and it's supposed to go underneath all of this and it's uh, it's overflowing here.
I won't be depending upon you about weather forecasts anymore, Maybe sweetheart. We start right there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, you noticed. Okay, we've entered a place called Forest Camp. I don't know what's what's here. Koi Pond. All right, that's cool. It's very lush in here. Our trike driver is leading the way. 200 paces ahead to get in here. I hope it includes a massage or something for 200. <laughs> Bamboo, broken. Okay, well, I didn't know to bring my bathing suit up here. Go on, get in there, make yourself some soup. She's really doing it. Ah, the other day. Okay, we're leaving Forest Camp Resort. There's our lovely trike over there. The flash flood has abated. But the rain continues a little bit. from the uh, port here in Dumaguete. And so the massage here, one hour Swedish, was 
400. So uh, me the sport, I give him a thousand for the both of us. Two massages for a thousand pesos. And this is where it's at. It's right across from the uh, the Dumaguete sign over there in the port. Okay, we are here on the grounds of Stillman University going to the Anthropological Museum over here. Do you feel like you're going back in time now, honey, and you're at college again? Yeah, but I'm looking at CR, I'm super, super pink. Did you, did you ever go to college? No, I never have been. <laughs> okay. Then it's no, it's, there's no deja vu for you here then, is there? Yeah, I'm, I'm, but I'm graduated for high school, okay? High school? Yeah. Okay. Remind you of high school? I'm not elementary. I'm graduated. <laughs> I graduate. Okay. Then first semester for college. I see. Okay. Okay, we made it to the Stillman University Anthropological Museum here. 100 pesos each to get in here. Let's see what they got. Honey, you are an expert at anthropology, right? What is anthropology? <laughs> These are anthropological artifacts, right? Something about the study of ancient civilizations or people, maybe? Huh? Pottery, ancient pottery? Well, that is a real crack pot. Look, honey, it's an ancient carandaria setup. Do you think that they used to have warm food at the Carinderia back that then? Is, that huh? is not Carinderia, is it? No, no. No, that is like um, to make music. It's a drum, are you going to be dun, 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 a, dun, dun, dun. Bang us out a tune. <laughs> now here's the Carinderia buffet set up over here. Yeah. What? It's for music. Really? Yeah. It's a, oh, it's a gong. That's a gong too. Yeah, it's a regular gong show in here. <laughs> okay, it looks like we're gonna be here for a while. She's gonna have to go through this whole this whole stack. I can't even get the whole stack and I gotta I gotta go backwards to see this whole stack of clothes here. How I how I start. <laughs> What's happening to you? <laughs> Her head is exploding. She's so many shoes and so much clothes. I don't know when. We haven't even gotten I to the start. purses yet. No, I don't know where I start. If I start. start. Okay, go, go upstairs. Go all the way to the back and start there. Okay. Well, we found the. Uh, shoes and the bags here. This is a place called Lee Supercenter here, downtown Dumaguete. And uh, I need to start she can here. never get enough purses or shoes, I can tell you that much. She has turned into a real octopus over here. <laughs> <laughs> But I don't know when I, where I start, I go there, like that. <laughs> start at the bottom. How many stacks? One, two, three, four. There's five stacks of this stuff right here. Her head is exploded. What section have you found now, honey? Yeah. It's cheaper here. Yeah, 100 plus I might have. 100, okay. That's a nice print. Gucci. You think you need one of those. <laughs> it's a Gucci ball. I'm I would buy that automatically. 
Okay, we're at the uh, public market here in uh, central Dumaguete, uh, looking around for bargains. Not really. Uh, I think we have enough junk, but we're killing about 45 minutes before we have to uh, jump on the ferry boat to go back to Bahal. So, uh, let's see, what do you want to find, honey? Another hat? Shoes? Flip-flops? A CR? She wants to find a CR. Okay. Well, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what to tell you. You're gonna have to ask somebody where a CR is. All right, moving right along after a little CR stop there. How many pesos was the CR stop, honey? Two pesos CR stop. All right. all the wonderful things that we can see down here we were going to leave our bags back at the Lee shopping mall uh, but I have a tablet and a camera in there and you have to hand carry that you cannot check it in so I figured I might as well just carry my whole backpack that's what we decided to do oh there's meat over here all right what else Watch how big the bumps are that I'm walking off of. All right, here's the uh, fish market. First class, second class. I want to zoom in on that and see what a first, second, third class. Okay, so here is the vegetable market. Dumaguete City Quadrangle now. Killing another half hour. Who this guy is over here at the statue? Hi. Is that one of your fearless leaders? Huh? She's got to look at the plaque. Huh? Who is it? Who is it? He's the Abe Lincoln of the Philippines. Who you are? <laughs> <laughs> Who you are? We don't know. The, the plaque got stolen. Huh? came and helped them save the day. Philippines, they really love Christmas, I gotta tell ya. They might as well just leave this thing up year round. It looks like they're, uh, I don't know, deconstructing it at the moment. Okay, we found a place to sit here with some uh, cardboard on the bench, and lo and behold, there's five pesos laying under there. She says, there's an owner. No, that's the boy. There's an owner. Well, we'll give him this five pesos back and see if there's a reward. Maybe give us one peso out of it. 
get four it's pesos. Huh? Uh, maybe All right, so while we have some time to kill here, I will impart my opinions on uh, Dumaguete and uh, a little bit of contrast between Dumaguete and Te Balarin over there in Bahal, which I'm much more familiar with. So let's see, one observation that I have here of Dumaguete is uh, generally things seem to be cheaper. I mentioned that the, uh, the hotel rooms seem to be uh, a pretty good deal. And uh, I will tell you the food, even if you're down here uh, by the uh, main drag on the waterfront there, uh, those restaurants, uh, they're reasonably priced and the food is really good. We ate it at two or three of them down there and, uh, and like that a lot. So uh, that's one good thing is uh, the price of the food. I'm gonna say things in general seem to be uh, cheaper around here. Now, as far as uh, the situation here with, uh, with the foreign guys, um, it's really kind of strange. Over there in uh, Te Balar and Bahal, when you see a, uh, a foreign guy, there's, there's guys over there and it's like eight out of 10 guys that you see over there. And I'm not kidding, they're like six foot four and they're lean and mean, these guys. And I think that most of those guys are Germans and uh, bumming around here in the shopping mall and so forth. Uh, the uh, foreign guys over here seem to be, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna guess, seven or eight out of 10 of them are actually from the United States. So uh, yeah, it's quite popular over here with, uh, uh, with the Americans. Now, how many of them are there over here? Well, when you're in the shopping mall, you do see quite a few of them, but once you get uh, a little bit uh, away from things, uh, this is just like any other place. It's not, it's not overrun by, uh, by Americanos or nothing like that. Now, as far as things to do uh, around here in Dumaguete, you do have uh, a few waterfalls and things up there if you get out of town. And I understand that there's two golf courses over here now. Uh, over in Bahal and in Panglao, uh, there's no golf courses. There's not even a putt-putt golf course. So that's definitely uh, uh, one good thing over here. Okay, we are on board for our final trike ride down to the port. I don't know where you can get a trike around here. For some reason, she likes walking in the middle of people. Oh, what, what, what? What? 
Buy a ticket. We got a, we got a ticket. You go there, right? We got to go there? Okay, so we're waiting in line here to pay the terminal fee. Whenever you get on a ferry boat, they charge you like uh, 30 pesos each, something like that. Okay, we are going in the PTB, the powers that be, going to this entrance here. No bomb jokes, honey. Okay, so we made it inside the Dumaguete ferry boat terminal here. She guaranteed me there's all kinds of delicious things to eat here. Let's see, potato chips. Of course, we never get to these places early enough to find a seat, do we? Well, sit over here, honey. Okay, let's see what conditions are getting back on the boat now. Looks pretty smooth. Right. We're not doing a tic tac. Okay, this is for YouTube. Okay, so see the way the see the way the uh, phone is is phased horizontally. All right. She just can't help herself. Okay, honey, come here. Um, now we're back here from our Dumaguete trip. Uh, we were there uh, two nights and three days, and uh, Jovi got her passport over there, all squared away, and. Uh, yeah, so we're um, we're back home. We're on the island of Panglao now, and so uh, I imparted a little bit of my opinion uh, about uh, Dumaguete and about uh, the differences between Dumaguete and Tagbilaran City. This young lady here, however, would be more of an expert on Tagbilaran than I. And you were also in Dumaguete. It was not your first time. It was my first time. Yeah. How long were you there for before? I don't do, it's the same, maybe two couple, nights. Couple days. Yeah. All right, well. Two nights. Okay, so anyways. Uh, all right, what I wanted to ask you, though, is. Oh, hold on a second, these people are screaming over here. <laughs> okay, so what I wanted to ask you is uh, what your opinion of uh, Dumaguete is, and. Um, why do you think that the Americanos choose Dumaguete so much? And what do you think uh, is the difference between Dumaguete and Tagbilaran City? Tell us a little bit about your opinions on all this. Quiet place, the Dumaguete. Dumaguete is quiet? Yeah. Okay. Um, cheaper? I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Then, I don't know. What else? That's not, not, it's not the same in Tagbilaran. Tagbilaran is so uh, tropic. Yeah. Dumaguete is not so tropic. Mm. Well, okay. I think I think Dumaguete is a little bit more compacted as far as the downtown area there is, and uh, Tabor is a little bit more spread oh, yeah, out. I have seen the Americano there in Dumaguete. This bare feet inside the mall. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. There's a notorious barefoot guy. We, yeah. We've seen him in there. So. Yeah. The, um, he have a sexy wife, but the. I don't know if it's husband or Sexy boyfriend. Wife. Yeah, oh. I have so there oh, inside the mall Robinson. Oh. Um, boyfriend Robinson. or husband, yeah. yeah. This <laughs> weary, uh, she didn't have a sleeper bare feet inside the mall, but the <laughs> wife is super sexy. <laughs> she was super sexy, huh? Yeah. Well, I missed that. I don't know. I didn't see him with anybody else. But You know, uh, my eyes is over, open there. <laughs> like that. Yeah. So. I look Left, right, left, right, left, from back. <laughs> yeah. So, anyways, um, each place uh, has its pluses and minuses, I suppose. But we did enjoy our stay over there in, in Dumaguete.
Yeah. Right? And you got your passport. Yeah, I'm probably, I have my passport. Four, my stage, passport no. four stages of get, getting a lost passport back. I have my passport back. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. That's it.